life worth living and retirement worth having is about the people in our life and whether or not they are trustworthy with our hopes, our pride, and our folly. Now think about what I'm saying here. Our hopes are the things we hope to accomplish in life, the love we want to produce in someone else, the value we want to provide in service to our business or our clientele, the productivity we want to give to others in our life, such as in our synagogue or in philanthropic organizations or in openly any area of life that we long to participate within. When we have hobbies, we usually develop an interest in them over the course of time, and then our hobbies change because our life changes. Practically, this is the way that love is produced in people, that in one minute we're simply friends, another minute we're colleagues, and a little bit short a while later we are madly in love with other people because we see their souls, we recognize their abilities, and we know in life that it takes time for love to be produced. You see, love is something that the world doesn't talk enough about. Politicians rarely use love as a platform, and I think that's a foolishness in marketing of them. You see, love is what makes the world go round. Love is what people usually live for. Love is also what people are willing to die for. Love of the land, love of their country, love of their home, love of their family, love of their neighbors sometimes, but mainly love of life. You see, to love one's life, one must be able to be in life. To have someone destroy a life, they literally take away all their rights to life. Right to lifers talk about the right of a fetus. I believe the right to life philosophy needs to be applied across all life. That regardless of the age and stage of a child, that every person has the right to life. Right to life means that we love our life not at all. It means that we have the rights to decide our life and our fate totally on our own accord. Now, in order to produce that, that means we must not have people interfering with our law-abiding rights, meaning we can't have people taking away our telephony. We can't have people infiltrating our emails. We can't have people social engineering, our social media, pretending to be the people we're supposed to be talking to, and openly we need to proactively and productively have in-person, face-to-face, 3D, live conversations, both for profit and for personal gain. You see, personal gain is really what it's all about, is it not? When we create a strategic partnership, a profitable alliance, we are looking at making money. We need to make money because money is required to live in this land. It's required to produce food. It's required to earn or rent shelter. It's required to buy a vehicle for transportation across the vast country that no longer has as many public transportation opportunities at a reasonable rate. We used to have buses all the time. We used to have trains. We used to have hired automobiles, but not so much anymore. The local hire automobiles are more expensive than any, any Uber drive, but they do give you some privacy to your property and where you're headed. In life, we have moments of time to make all the difference in the world for people, but only if we love on them enough to allow them to feel love. There are people who will tell you, I love you, but I can't agree with what you're doing. There are other people who say, I love you and people love you, but they will interfere with what someone is doing. You see, the right to life movement has failed many times to be helpful to those people because they make it about the unborn as opposed to those in the living. You see, right to life makes sense, I'm sure, to many people of faith because the human being is a unique soul. And that unique soul has the right to be produced, the right to live, the right to go on in life. There are sadly circumstances where people have been foolish with their rights to life, meaning they didn't protect themselves when they got busy with someone, or the protection they purchased failed them. What I wonder is how many protective things, protective prophylactic, prophylactic, sorry, prophylactics, if I've said it correctly, because I don't 
necessarily know that language all that well is probably true or any type of contraceptive devices that failed people are those companies liable or was it merely an ovulation cycle that didn't quite hit the mixed in chemistry of the medication that was provided in either some sort of vaginal cream or some sort of pill now I'm sort of putting it out there that this is not a PG audio cast and I'm really talking about right to life because right to life is always talking about something unborn and that comes about frankly from sex. Now when I talk about sex as a pastor, I'm not usually talking about it in the way that I like to talk about it. I prefer to refer people to Song of Songs in the Bible. That in Song of Songs there's a lot of poetic uh, license with regard to what that man is talking about in the love making of the time. Sometimes people understand it, other times they don't, but in reality it's a love song about how men and women and their people who are partnered together in general should be loving on each other's selves, their bodies, their souls, mainly their souls. Now when I talk about right to life, I'm really talking about everyone's right to produce a life for themselves that they choose without hindrance of the lies that people, families, colleagues, co-workers, neighbors, and strangers might say about another human life. Unfortunately, we do have people who professionally lie. They are spies in the world, they are CIA, they are FBI. They pretend to be a role they take on a role because of their intellectual capabilities to do so, to infiltrate, to investigate, to find the bad people of the land. At the same time, we have regular folks who lie on a regular basis. They lie for a lot of reasons. They lie to get out of responsibility. They lie to get out of work. They lie to harm other people. Right there is where the right to life crosses the boundaries that when a person has right to life, they have the right to life without being harmed by lies and inappropriate uses of idiosyncrasies or stressful situations. Psychological abuse often produces in the person abused a rage, a rage so violent that it could become a physical abuse in return situation. Is that a violation of right to life? Possibly. Is it appropriate response to someone violating the bounds of the human mind, emotions, feelings, or soul? Maybe. You see, sometimes in life we have to put people in their place, but if our laws make it so impossible to put people in their place, it makes it difficult to protect our lives from the liars who psychologically abuse and then report as things as if they are being abused. I have people that I know who do those games. They get really intimate in conversations with people. They push on buttons, if you will. They ply information, and then they use that information to destroy a person's right to their own mind, their own organization, their own productivity, their own performance, their own everything in life. Those are the liars of the land, and they have failed to understand the right to life philosophy. The right to life philosophy means I have a right to my life, you have a right to your life. And politicians need to talk about right to life in that simplicity of terms. Stop talking about the unborn fetus. Start talking about proper sexual education so that we don't have as many problems needing to have people make a decision as whether or not they have the financial wherewithal, the emotional capability, or the physical probability that they can produce a healthy fetus at that moment in their life. That is always the challenge that a woman is faced with when she has to make the decision whether or not she's going to keep a baby. A, did she plan the baby? B, does she want the baby? Three, not does she need the baby, but can she afford the baby? Many teenagers get pregnant and have babies they cannot afford. They put themselves behind because they believe in right to life, but they didn't think about their own right to life in a moment of time either that when they were getting busy with their boyfriend, which is obviously usually how that happens, although there are people who get busy with girlfriends and other things, and I'm not saying anything about that other than I'm just talking about procreation here. I'm not talking about orientation here. I'm literally saying, listen, folks, right to life is the choice we make 
when we share our naked body with someone we love or trust in those moments of time. Plenty of physical activity has happened amongst total strangers. We all know this. People who meet up in bars and just take the risk and go home and get it on with someone they just met because the chemistry was right, the mood was good, everybody was horny, and it was time to go. And in Japanese, we say go, not come, but that's okay. I can laugh a little bit because this is not a PG-13 audio cast, and I'm a pastor of a different sorts. I profess to love one person. It's my right to love. It's my right to choose to love. It's no one's right to take my property, to look at my wrist, to see my arm badge, to do anything like that to me. But I have siblings who have violated my rights. They have stolen paperwork with information for my life insurance policy, naming the person that I care for enough to leave my legacy to. It's a fair sum that is appropriately hers because I love her and that's enough for me. I don't have to give it to my siblings. They will get their own inheritance from my mother, and I don't give a rat's ass what my mother does for me at this point. It is sort of the responsibility of the person that I leave my legacy to to see that I'm buried in the simplest of form and my ashes are taken literally to Japan would be my hope and blown in the sea. I don't need to be put a box in the ground and if she wants to cremate me, fine. That is the cheapest way to get rid of a person's remains. The Japanese do this, but what the Japanese do differently is that they literally have these special death chopsticks that they actually pick up the bones themselves and put them in the urn as a part of their honoring of the dead. I don't believe there are that many coffins in Japan. I think it is the law of the land that everyone is cremated. I'm pretty sure, but it's been a while since I've looked that up. It's merely a matter of spacing, but there are family plots that people are buried within, and now that I no longer, longer have a Japanese spouse, I don't have to worry about can I produce enough income to buy one of those places for my ex-spouse and my son to be put later in life. That is now their legacy and their responsibility to figure out with her new man as her new life partner and husband, according to her, and my son for him and his life, his wife, his children, etc. Now, when I talk about right to life, I'm talking about real things. I'm talking about the real aspect of dying. I'm a man who's dying. You're a woman who's dying. And literally, the question is, who is the person you want to be dying with? And if you die in your sleep, who do you want that to be next to, who will lovingly care for your body, call the proper authorities, and make sure you're put in the right place at the right time in the right moment in life. My father's situation was sort of unique in that he was cremated and then they held on to the cremation until it was time in the appropriate month to literally put him in the ground. My siblings cared so little about me that I was caught in traffic and they did the entire ceremony without me present. You see, that's how little of importance I am to my siblings. So when you hear this message, you'll understand why I have little care and regard for them. Because they have violated my rights federally on many legal documentations and aspects of my physical and intellectual health, but also because when my father died, I was not allowed to participate in the ceremony by simply delaying a little bit for me to arrive. Sure, there was a lot of other people present, my cousins, my aunts and uncles, and other people, but I was literally off track by, say, 20 minutes, maybe 30 at most. And since I was a child of my father, one of the you know, direct descendants, it would have really been nice to have been able to see that ceremony. I've never really talked about that before. And I never really felt it like this before. But openly, this is an authentic audio cast of a man who loves someone who wants to tell her himself without his sisters infiltrating his rights to not only talk to his ex-spouse, like my sister Cindy has done, Facebooking with her, inappropriately so, or my eldest sister Terry, who lies about her interactions with someone I care for very deeply. And if that's not true, she certainly has alluded as if she has in her foolish way of thinking that her lies don't get past me. 
I know every single tell of my siblings. And the tell is the liar, for those of us who like the movies, who need, know those sort of things, or who loved some of the original films that some of these films, whose titles that escape me at the moment, are <clears throat> about. But openly in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. We can either shit all over their life and produce a pride and arrogance that says, I am Lord over your life and I will choose your path and I will determine your health care and I will ruin your property and I will take away your ability to sell your work and I will make sure you can't have a business again and I will force you into a subservient role in retail life or you're going to uplift them and uphold the laws of this land that says everyone here is free and has the liberty to go the highest level they can possibly get to. You see, politicians today have forgotten what the land is about, I think. They get so busy talking about gun control, which is important for sure, and also foreign land problems, that they forget to talk about the policies that make this country great and envied by the rest of the world. In life, we have moments of time to tell people we love them. And as a man who's dying, like most other people are dying every single day, my plan is to have that one chance to sit down over a meal that's not in a rush, that's not interrupted by constant teenagers, and openly simply say to someone I love, I love you, and this is why. Please take my life insurance policy information so that if and when I go, you will be benefiting from my love. As any man does, he protects those he loves, even if it doesn't make sense to the one he's protecting. In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for people. We have moments of time to be real with people. We have moments of time to be authentic. We literally have moments of time to produce rights from wrongs. But there are plenty of people who are willing to wrong a person, to prove their point, to teach a lesson, and frankly, it's not what God put on them to do. There is no Lord in heaven saying, you are going to teach this man a lesson. That is an arrogant mind saying, I'm going to teach a person a lesson. There is no Lord in heaven saying, you are going to make sure this person goes to jail by failing them in your services. That is actually the satanic force infiltrating the mind, saying that to you. Now, openly, we have moments of time, as I talk about, to take back talk, meaning to regroup, to repair, to rebuild, to forgive, to provide peace of mind, to allow a loving soul to speak to another loving soul and to get to the bottom of why someone literally thinks they have the right to destroy a man's life that they may or may not know, simply because they feel like it. A hate crime is still a hate crime is still a hate crime, and it's outlandish today that we don't have a law like Mark's law that literally says, this is my life, this is my body, you may not touch it without my permission. Life is about loving people, producing soul-keeping ways, like my book says. And openly, they deleted all that work, too. And practically, it's about allowing a man to decide his own fate without policing, without mobbing, without tagging, without electrifying, without ruining a life force in the land. This opportunity to speak is mine. You have your own abilities, your own telephone, your own computer, your own video cameras, your own technology to make your own legacy of footage online. I encourage you to do so because storytelling is what changes the world, but openly dysfunctional love 
dysfunctional families and destructive tendencies are what are killing our great nation and this land, where people are lording over others in ways that the Lord in heaven has never said was appropriate. Lord Jesus is only present in the people who love, honor, regard, and safeguard the land that we all love. That means we don't interfere in the lives of others. We report simple crimes to the proper, trustworthy officers who literally do the legwork and the investigations and the interrogations and the inquisitions that produce the truth from those who fail to recognize that this land is not their land if they can't follow the rules of the land, not of some concept of Christ or some belief of what a Bible says. But openly, the laws of the land says we are all created equal under the Lord in heaven. We all have rights to pursue life, liberty, and happiness, and that right is not revocable by any human being whatsoever. And we don't have the right to steal from people is a pretty big part of those laws and the reasons that the forefathers left their nations abroad and came to discover good old-fashioned American values are based on those realities. Now, in this lifetime, we have a moment of time to help people. We can either pursue the big hot ticket people who already have money in the bank, or we can help the impoverished, care for the elderly, serve the needy, and literally put our money and our legacy in uplifting the souls of other human beings, no matter what their orientation, no matter what their gender style, no matter how they live, no matter what color their hair is, no matter what kind of clothes they wear, People's souls belong to the Lord in heaven, not to any official, not to any judge, not to any lawyer, not to any police officer, not to any pastor, not to any family member, not to any neighbor, colleague, or otherwise. They belong to the Lord. This has been Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications, LLC. I hope my company's still intact. But frankly, it's hard to tell with all the cyber attacks on my life and inappropriate touching of my body and my wallets and everything my sisters continue to do to me. Thanks for listening.